absolutely no plan for this video. I'm just gonna talk. Please excuse how icky I look, but I was up all night puking. I am home sick today. I was able to keep a granola bar down this morning though, so I think the worst of it is over. This is gonna be a quick review because um, I don't have a lot of things to say about this book, but I did still wanna talk about it because of how much it annoyed me, and that is A Winter in New York by Josie Silver. It's just the second book I have read by this author. I also read a book by her called, oh, what was it called? One Day in December, and I adored that book. Loved that book. I read it a few years ago, and I believe I gave it five stars, if I'm remembering correctly. So when I saw Josie Silver come up as an option for a book of the month pick, I went for it. Um, every December for book of the month, I pick the Christmassy, wintry one, like option that they have and um they're usually okay this one was also okay i was really looking forward to another josie silver book and it was just kind of a letdown and i'll explain why normally i have like my ipad in front of me with notes that i have taken about the book but i don't have that many thoughts about this book so <laughs> let's talk about the pros first the cover is cute so this book came out very recently either november or december of 2023 it's long it is 300 and oh, let's see uh 357 pages long it's a thick book and it has a 3.72 i believe on goodreads last time i checked which is not amazing but not terrible either the reason this book annoyed me so much is that it uses one of the most annoying tropes in romance writing which is miscommunication and by that i mean this book could have been half as long if the main character had just been honest. And there are so many things that happen in this story that could have been avoided if the main character had just been honest. So let's get into the plot. It's not like there's any spoilers to give away because there really was no plot. <laughs> um, basically, the main character's name is Iris. She's British. She lives in New York. She's running away from her psychologically abusive ex. And... She runs into a guy at a bookstore. She's reaching for the last novel in this trilogy, the last one on the shelf. Another guy happens to reach for it before her. Um, in order to make the guy feel guilty, she lies and tells him that her husband just died. She was never married. Her ex is not dead. Um, but that is a lie she tells him in order to make him feel guilty for grabbing the last book. Seven months later, she runs into this man again. Turns out his name is Gio. Look at my cat. I love when he does this. He sits like a little human. <laughs> Hi. He owns a gelateria, and I hope I'm saying that right. A place where you buy gelato. I honestly, I should have kept track how many times the word gelato is used in this book. It's gotta be hundreds. It's, I'm so sick of reading the word gelato. If I never see or hear or think about the word gelato again, it'll be too soon. But he owns a gelato restaurant that is struggling because his uncle has just had a stroke and forgot the secret family recipe for gelato. And that's a big deal because the recipe is not written down anywhere and only two people in the family or something are allowed to know it at a time. And his uncle is one of the two people. I don't remember exactly, but his uncle doesn't remember the recipe because he just had a stroke and so now they're struggling. Iris recognizes his storefront from a picture in one of her mom's photo albums. Now Iris's mom recently passed away from cancer, Iris. And her mom were very close. She misses her. Her mom was a musician. And long story short, Iris puts it together based on this photo album of her mother that her mom knew Gio's uncle. And Gio's uncle gave her mother the secret family recipe as a token of his love. And so Iris is in possession of this secret family recipe and didn't realize how big of a deal that was until she meets Gio. And, oh my god, so they start this friendship, and I'm, I'm getting annoyed even talking about it. Gio tells Iris that he is a widower, and he has a teenage daughter. So now Iris feels terrible for lying to this man seven months ago, saying that she was also a widow, that she had also lost a spouse. And instead of coming clean and saying, oh my God, this is so embarrassing, but that time we met in the bookstore seven months ago, I lied. Um, I was not married. My husband is not dead. I made that up to make you feel bad. No, 
Iris continues on with the lie for a majority of the book and the guilt eats away at her, as it should. Another lie she tells is that she has no idea who Gio is or his family, even though she has a photo album including pictures of her mother with his uncle, and uh, she knows their secret family recipe. Another lie that she goes with for a majority of the book. I don't understand her reason for the lie. Well, her reason for the lie is she doesn't want her, she doesn't want Gio to think less of his uncle for giving away the secret family recipe. However, she could have helped him save his restaurant had she just told him, hey, I know the recipe, my mom has it. I know that's like, you know, super taboo in this family to give the recipe away, but I know it. So if you want it, here it is. Nope, she pretends to help him make the recipe from scratch. It's just so stupid. I mean, and they break up like two or three times. He always comes back to her and is like, I feel like we have something here. And she's like, I can't. And in the end, he finds out the truth and he's pissed rightfully. And that's how the book ends. So I gave this a two out of five because it was so long and full of nothing. And it's just, it's just one of the most annoying tropes in romance when when miscommunication is like the whole plot. If you told the truth, you and this guy could have been so happy together, but instead you lied for months and months and months and that you dug yourself into this crazy deep hole. And I don't feel bad for you because that was a dumb thing to do. A Winter in New York by Josie Silver. I just told you the whole entire plot. So if you feel like reading it, go ahead. There are no plot twists or spoilers because that was it. I'm in a bad mood because I'm sick and this book was annoying. So sorry, but um, I would skip it cover's cute though. I'm gonna go try and choke down some more food because I'm hungry but I feel nauseous at the same time so that's fun. Mm. Okay goodbye.